Hey guys, Thomas the Sulu Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review Disney's Pixar's Coco. Now, quick disclaimer before I officially start this review, I must admit that before watching this movie, I committed the worst possible thing, and that is watching other reviews before watching the movie. And most of the reviews I saw said positive things about this movie, so when I went to go see it, my expectations were higher than they should have been. And in some respects, yes, I, I can understand where, the, where that praise comes from. However, that also made it a little bit easier to find some of its, its flaws, so we'll also get into those as well, because there are some issues that I have with Coco. So we begin with this narration from this boy, the, the boy we follow in the movie whose name is Miguel. Now he believes through, through this narration that his family is cursed before he was even born, which I have always felt is a terrible ideology to live by. I've seen people on t on the internet with this ideology of, oh, uh, because of what my great, great, great whatever did, uh, that means I'm responsible for that. I don't, I think that ideology is really poisonous. I've always thought that, um, so he does start off with a really bad ideology for me. Uh, so anyways, his family has decided to banish music because of this one guy named, uh, uh, I believe it is the great great grandfather. I believe that was the the lineage here. Uh, so they ban music, and then we meet some of the family. Uh, I believe it was the great great grandmother that's still alive, but she's often forgetting things, and she's the one, by the way, named Coco. So, anyways, Miguel heads into town, and he looks up to this De La Cruz music icon, and this is where we begin our first issue with this movie. The obvious, never meet your heroes cliche comes immediately into action. The moment we are introduced to this De La Cruz character, I'm going, he's gonna end up being the real villain in this movie, isn't he? Even though all the townspeople look up to him like some sort of hero. Oh boy, we can't wait to get to that cliche. Uh, I can also say that this movie follows kind of a like a similar kind of story structure to uh, a very similar movie in the veins of playing music, which is unfortunately Rock Dog, which I don't think was a great movie uh, in general. I do think the, ad the acting, animation, and some of the story bits here are a lot stronger, obviously. Um, but again, I still... I just mentioned one of my issues with this, uh, movie. So anyways, they talk about how the, this, uh, cruise guy was crushed by a bell, and that is how he, uh, died. So, oddly enough, Miguel's like, yeah, I want to be just like that guy. And I was like, I wrote in my notes, wait, let's be crushed by a bell. And yeah, it's kind of a... Th Sick joke, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, so he takes this flyer uh, for this music competition that's going to take place on the Day of the Dead, or, uh, yeah, yeah, that. Anyways, uh, so the grandma uh, takes the uh, Miguel to this room where there are all these um, pictures of the, their deceased ones, uh, and he finds, Miguel finds his dog, and dog often follows him around and stuff like that, and that will become a little bit important later on. 
So, he eventually picks up this guitar and he's like playing it along with um, this tape of Cruz. And he's like paying crucial attention to how he's, uh, Cruz is playing and he's following along. Uh, so he, now he's like sneaking through um, the town. And we learn his last name is, interestingly enough, uh, I believe it's pronounced Rivera. Which I think, if I remember correctly, that's El Tigre's, uh, from the show El Tigre, though. I forget his first name, like his first actual real name. I think it's Manny, Manny Rivera. I was like, wait, are, are, is, he, is he related to the El Tigre family? I don't know, that'd be really, that'd be really cool, even though... That's technically, I think that was on Nickelodeon, if anything. I don't know. Uh, it's been a hot second since I've seen El Tigre, but I would love to see an El Tigre movie, even though it's the, movie, the show's done. I don't know. Anyway, that aside, uh, so the picture, one of the pictures broke, and it reveals some crucial information. Um... And, you know, that dealt with the dog, dealing with, um, that. So, he finds out, uh, that being Miguel, that the grand-grandfather, uh, w was Cruz. But, the stuff was destroyed after he reveals this stuff, this information to his family. All his musical stuff was destroyed, because they're like, they're still like, oh, can't play music and they finally the grandmother breaks the guitar so he decides that he's gonna run away from home so he flees from home and ends up finding luck or trying to get a new guitar in order to play for the day of the dead so he makes his way up to the statue and he sees uh, this notion of like never give up or seizure moment uh, type of ordeal so he goes ahead and breaks into the room with the guitar that is uh, placed for Cruz he strums the guitar once and it like beams off this dust and when I first saw that in the trailer yes I did think of Kubo in the two strings when I first saw that I thought that's where this movie was going in a more Kubo based direction, but no, that is not the case. Kubo is a completely different story in that regard. Um, but, anyways, uh, he goes, uh, he does the string, and you know, he does the thing. So, once he does that, and the people break in, he, f he sees that the people are starting to go through him and he eventually falls into this hole where he is helped by this skeleton that suddenly appears. He freaks out and he starts to freak out more as there are more and more skeletons suddenly uh, going about. He meets his uh, family that is uh, the deceased, the ones that he saw in the pictures. So, they bring him to this bridge, this sort of crossover point, if you will, uh, and they sort of see all these spirit creatures along the way. We see that one of the skeletons, uh, who we later find out is, um, what was his name, Hector? Uh, Hector is like this guy, he's like trying to get through, and he gets... He starts to like run to the bridge and he like falls and like I'm assuming he was gonna end up like falling through if they didn't catch him at some point. So yeah, anyway, like there's this whole uh, police aspect to it or like, I don't know, some sort of security detail in some regard. So anyways, uh, that happens, and, uh, Miguel overhears all of this, 
this and seeing all this. So Hector ends up fleeing the scene and um, one of the uh, spirit animals like ends up being like sent in a direction uh, after like Miguel ends up like eventually following this Hector guy. So now uh, Miguel's on his own uh, and he meets with this Hector guy who helps him blend in uh, putting the skeletal paint on his face. So uh, now that those two are having their moment, Hector's like this, you know, he's trying to get back, uh, trying to see his daughter, and it's kind of obvious where this, well, I think they did a little bit better job of this aspect of the setup of who Hector is than the more obvious, like, oh, Cruz is the bad guy sort of ordeal. So anyways, putting that for later... Um, so anyways, they find out where, they're trying to find out where Cruz is rehearsing so that, you know, Miguel can get his blessing. And they are following, he, Miguel ends up following this dog when they're in this, like, rehearsal room because they make it over there. Uh, so there's this lady skeleton helping who used to help Cruz, and she's like, oh, he, he's actually in this tower place way over here. Uh, so anyways, they figure out that there's a competition in this version, in the actual Deadland, in the Day of the Dead, that's also uh, happening, and the winner gets to play alongside Cruz. So Hector, I mean, Miguel believes that this is the way to go about doing things. So, Hector kind of strings uh, Miguel along regardless to this area where these more forgotten, I called them, they didn't give them a name, I don't think so. They, I, I think they did, but I kind of forgot what they were called, so I decided to call them the Forgotten Ones. They're just these um, skeletons that happen to be forgotten by their families, and one of them is passing on, like, past that point of being a skeleton. So we see that uh, Hector uh, meets this passing skeleton with the guitar, and he start in the this guitar skeleton wants Hector to play, and then Hector ends up playing. And the friend vanishes from that land. Uh, so, anyways, the competition is beginning really uh, soon. So now Miguel wants to earn the ble earn the blessing of uh, Cruz, which is why he keeps like rejecting this idea of getting it from his family because he tried to get that earlier. And the family is like, no more playing music. And then he, he like stole the guitar, which was under the conditions of no more playing music. So he ended up returning pretty quickly when he returned home. So Miguel ends up on the stage. And it turns out that he can play really well, as shown earlier. And he can sing really good as well. They found someone who's really talented in this aspect. Meanwhile, that green spirits, uh, cat thing, <laughs> that super big cat thing is on the chase, the one I mentioned briefly earlier, so that's constantly going on. And after his little, uh, song that turns into a duet, he ends up seeing his family, and he's like, oh, I gotta get out of here. So now he leaves Hector, because Hector's, you know was trying to, he kind of lied, he kind of told the truth, he was like sort of in between in that sort of weird uh, moral gray area, so, but Miguel was having none of that, so he left, but the spirit does end up finding him, um, and that leads to 
uh, one of the ones that brought him back uh, singing to him to make him stop. Uh, she told him that she was the one that made the sacrifice for her family while uh, the husband, her husband, chose music. So this is like trying to attempt to imply that um, Cruz was the husband all along and all that. Like it's trying its best to like stray away from uh, that, but it, it at the same time it starts to make it slightly more obvious that Hector may be the actual one that's related to him, although that does come into actuality later on in the film. So anyways, he gets into this party building where uh, Cruz actually is, so Miguel starts playing for Cruz, and he ends up like falling in the water after doing a pretty good performance, all things considered, until he falls in the water. So, uh, he gets this tour afterwards, and he gets shown by his great-great-grandfather, you know, that Cruz, essentially, um... But we learn that through uh, sort of an exposition part that Hector ended up writing all the songs for Cruz. And we find out that, oh, big shocker, Cruz is the one that poisoned Hector. That's the way he uh, ended up in this world. Uh, Hector ends up fighting Cruz uh, for a brief moment, and he gets taken away very before the fight can even really begin, really. And afterwards, Cruz then has Miguel taken away, and it makes it makes the whole "never meet your hero" cliche come to its obvious uh, end. So they're tossed into this well, this huge well, and Hector mentions his daughter, who's forgetting about him, and they have that very nice, sad Pixar moment uh, cliche. Yes, it is, for me, turning into a cliche, but that doesn't mean it's a bad cliche. I think they actually did a pretty nice moment with uh, Hector talking about his daughter. And how they discover Hector was, in fact, a, the great-great-grandfather all this time. And so his wife was Coco. Uh, so the dog changes into a spirit. I, I, I personally didn't understand that. I mean, maybe he was a spirit all along. I don't know. Anyways, he's like he like makes his way over there. The dog, that being... And that eventually brings the bigger spirit with them, so they are able to fly back. And they do a really nice job about sort of doing this never forget your family message. I think they did a really solid job with this aspect of the movie. I thought that was really well handled. So props to this movie for doing a really solid job on that. I felt that... And I think they did a really slow job of handling the message of, like, death and, you know, you know after death, if you believe in that thing. Um, I think they did a really good job of both of those, both of the morals of this movie. Uh, really well handled. Uh, so anyways, the family uh, helps uh, with moving things along. So, Cruz runs into the family. They bump into each other. And Cruz runs off, and the family starts to fight off these guards that are helping protect Cruz in this big performance that, that is about to happen. So, um... The, um... 
Hector's wife, the the one that was mad at him throughout most of the movie, ends up doing this like performance as she's also fleeing from the guards as well. And then Cruz jumps in on this opportunity to do some music fighting, or like holding her back music uh, competition thing. I don't, I don't know what I would call that, but yeah, that's essentially what happens. That whole debacle, she decides that she's going to change the conditions of the music, but she ends up getting pulled back in by Cruz. But this time, they end up playing the message for the rest of the skeletons uh, to hear what Cruz is saying, uh, sort of revealing Cruz's, what Cruz had been doing to the rest of the skeletons. So Miguel starts to fall because Cruz like shoves him off like the stage which actually is like really really high up. The dog tries to get him and then it fails and then the green spirit is still there so it gets him, uh, picks him all the way back up. And the picture of Hector which is what bring, which, uh, which is what allows them to cross over falls into the water, so uh, Miguel believes that there's no possible way because Hector is at this moment fading now from this world more now than previously. Uh, the green spirit um, pushes and grabs Cruz and like throws him ironically under a bell, which is how he died in the uh, real thing, in real, the real world. So, anyways, Miguel's brought back under the new conditions, which is essentially just like, oh, uh, you know, always remember your family and stuff like that. And, you know, nothing about music was mentioned, so he's like, whew. So, Miguel then rushes to Coco to plead her to remember um, Hector because he was still fading at this point in time. So he plays one of the songs he played earlier called Remember Me, which is a song that was performed by Hector. And it's a really nice uh, re uh, redone version of the song. And this gets her to remember uh, the details of who Hector was and what he did and so on and so forth. So we skip some time ahead to find out that Coco has also passed on and that a new family member was born as well. Sort of indicating a very short, like, oh, circle of life sort of ordeal, uh, even though I'm not sure who is responsible for that new child. Regardless of that, um, Miguel is doing what he wants to do, which is play music for his family. And we see that the ones that have crossed over are able to be in the vicinity even though they're in a different astral plane. And that is the end of Coco. Yes, it does have one issue of the whole cliche that I'm personally not a fan of. Of, oh, never meet your heroes. Oh. Um, but besides that one cliche... I still really enjoyed this movie, for the most part. Uh, you know, that one cliche was a bit of a drag to get through, but the rest of the movie was really solid still. I really still enjoyed it. The music was really good. Uh, the animation was beautiful. That goes with saying with Disney and Pixar coming together once again. Um, the morals were surprisingly well handled. I will say that. That was definitely the highlight of this movie for me. The morals were so well handled. And, uh, that's what really made me, uh, boost up my, my initial thoughts. Because I was gonna consider giving it, like, a 6 out of 10. But I think it's well-deserving of a 7 out of 10. It's a solid animated flick. Um, and I would have given it even an 8 out of 10, but I do think that that one cliche does kind of hold it back a little bit, just a smidge enough 
or, you know, 7.5 out of 10, so it's sort of in between a 7 and an 8. I think that's where this movie lies for me. Um, but yeah, that is my review for Coco. And if you enjoyed this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, to make sure to check out that link in the description. It will head you over to my Patreon. Any donations are so greatly appreciated now more than ever. So... Until next time, everyone. Bye!